tenho duas perguntas seguidas. É, uma ao, ao nosso embaixador Castro Neves e, e a outra à professora Franzin. O embaixador nos alertou contra uh, esse, esse caráter cíclico do caudilismo e, e eu me pergunto que, dadas as circunstâncias ideológicas do mundo globalizado, se ele já não parece perder força e, e para nós tem uma certa, uma certa ironia de, de farsa. Quer dizer, já é, é, é uma perspectiva assim, muito é, elitista achar que ele já tem é, características de farsa ou, de fato, a situação de pobreza da América Latina ainda permite ser levada a sério. E a doutora Francine, é, correlacionando é, desenvolvimento econômico, gestão econômica, projeto econômico e é, apoio popular, qual fôlego teria ainda é, o governo Hugo Chávez, é, perguntando também se, como fator interveniente, se a oposição chilena tem outro projeto alternativo econômico que possa seduzir a população. I just wanted to make some comments based on lots of rich discussion here. And uh, I, I would start simply by saying something about the, the liberal international project, which has been discussed here. And, and I'm not sure what that is, but just give you what, what I think uh, would be my narrative of what, what has happened. We've had some historical arguments about the, <clears throat> the origins of the open system and whether it's in crisis now. And I would, would simply say that it is a, um, it's been an extraordinary dynamic unfolding experiment in, in uh, openness and uh, driven by free trade. It's certainly it began in the post-war period among the advanced countries where the main object was uh, tariffs on industrial products and those were brought down from high levels to low levels and that then led to further <coughs> rounds that uh, tackled non-tariff barriers and the number of countries that were uh, party to the trade round, starting with the Kennedy round, the Tokyo round, and the Uruguay round, and now the Doha round, which is very frustrated, have seen expanding states, more states in it, and more issues that relate to developing countries, although agriculture is the hardest one, not so much because of developing countries as because countries like Japan and Australia and other countries uh, are, 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 are problems uh, in their relationship with other uh, developed countries. So it, it's, it's as much a north-north problem as a north-south problem. I would s say there are two measures, really, of, of, of the success of the, the liberal project relating to the world economy. One is simply that you have seen extraordinary wealth production across the, the world. Uh, the, the, the spoils of modernity have been spread widely. Uh, it's partly seen by the fact that the distribution of power is rapidly changing today uh, based on the shift in the uh, distribution of wealth. Uh, uh, countries like China and India and Brazil are getting rich, and they're getting rich in a system that allows for trade and exchange that cannot easily be uh, described as imperial. It's a much more open, uh, liberal type of order, and the proof is in the pudding, that is to say, uh, it's in the nature of the societies and whether they are advantaged or disadvantaged by participating in the system. And I would say almost every country has made a, a, a decision that they're more advantaged than disadvantaged. When I was in graduate school, I read this, these books on dependency theory, and the most brilliant was written by this guy named Cardozo. Then he became president of Brazil and invited international business to Brazil, and it was a story about how uh, the evolution of both the international system and the evolution of thinking inside of countries like Brazil have led to different policies and to dramatically different outcomes. Uh, the other measure of whether it's successful over the long term is looking at the rules and institutions themselves. And here we have the WTO, which is by far the most legal-based international institution on earth. 
uh, that countries are trying to join. China wanted to join, now Russia wants to join. It is a, a, a mechanism where countries pre-commit themselves to uh, abide by decisions by dispute settlement mechanisms that uh, are brought to bear on trade disputes of various sorts. And in those disputes, you have poor countries winning cases brought, uh, uh, in front of rich countries. Uh, uh, China has won trade disputes against the United States, and the United States has had to implement them. That's a measure of how power is not a dominating or fundamental or determinating influence on trade disputes. The WTO is an example of a rule-based mechanism. It's not perfect, but it takes power and le lets power stay at the door. It's based on merit of the case, the, the, the details uh, that uh, trade lawyers bring to bear. So that is a, a, a very different kind of world system than in the 19th century, the 18th century, or any time in the past. My next point. There have been competing philosophies within the liberal international order. The, the early philosophies of the post-war period in the West were not neoliberal, were not fundamentally laissez-faire. They were social democratic. They were what I call embedded liberal. That is to say, it was openness plus the welfare state. It was a decision, a vision really of the open system that uh, trade is good, but trade can also be destabilizing, and it can, un it can be uh, unfair to some people. Uh, lawyer, uh, economists tell us that in, tr in trade relations, winners win more than losers lose, but there are losers in trade relations. Some, some in a trade relationship, some people are not competitive, so they lose their jobs, their industry goes out, and they have to retrain and, and, and be in a different industry. What, what a social democratic vision of international liberalism is, is that there are social mechanisms for supporting those who lose. Uh, worker retraining, uh, 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 unemployment insurance, and other social safety me mechanisms. That's the social democratic version of, of uh, liberal internationalism. The, the more neoliberal version occurred in the 1980s and onward, and that is re really definitely a, a vision of, of liberal internationalism that is in crisis, that the financial crisis clearly told us that that you need more regulation, you need more embedded liberalism. And so uh, my uh, message would be to, to Brazil is that Brazil is perfectly situated to be a voice of what we'll call the social democratic ver version of the liberal international vision. And uh, that, again, is one where uh, it's a mix of state and market. It's a mix of openness and managed trade. Um, and the U.S. Uh, uh, was a champion of that, and I think it will come back to it uh, as we re-regulate and look for ways to protect our societies from the downside of openness, even as we keep ourselves available to receive the benefits of the openness. Final point about China and Russia, because I've been writing on what I think is the <coughs> bankruptcy of their vision. I don't think that China has a model for the international economy that's sustainable. It is a, it is a practice of, uh, we'll call it network mercantilism, state-to-state -state relations. It's predatory, it's based on trade, uh, 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 deals on investment in Latin America and, and in Africa. And it, it, it creates certain advantages to China, but it's not a model that the world can embrace. It is a only sustainable if everybody else, the rest of us, are liberal internationalists. And so it's not a model that, Ch that China can, uh, can, can uh, step forward as the new world hegemon and, and ask the world to, to adopt. Because if, they, if, if we would, and if everyone did, uh, it would uh, uh, create a system that would provide almost no benefit to anybody. We would all be losers. So again, the Chinese model only works if they do it alone with maybe a couple other countries uh, on the side. Venezuela, I don't know, but some other countries who are, would be in this kind of a predatory, uh, opportunistic relationship to the liberal system. Um, and so I, I don't think it's go going to go anywhere, uh, although China, because it's so big, could be a spoiler for a long, long time to come. But um, it seems to me that, that the kind of 
system that we want is one that, that really uh, Brazil and the United States can agree upon, which is a, uh, a kind of social democratic vision of, of, of liberal uh, openness. And it's, it's, it's got history, theory, and uh, a post-war story that backs it as the, the most dynamic and most, uh, 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 most powerful way for states to, to find their pathway to modernity. Agora, uma das perguntas né, feitas pelo embaixador né, primeiro, né, quanto à questão do, do, do projeto autista, do turismo, e depois a professora, né, sobre a sustentabilidade do projeto oposição.